So UnCSS is it's a really powerful build tool. It's a little bit newer, but it's been around for a while. And uh, basically it can go through your HTML, see what you didn't use, and then actually dump it out of your output CSS file. The, the reason this is really powerful is because it could take a file that's um, you know, 120 you know, kilobytes and bring it down to you know, really small, like 20 or, or 10 or something ridiculous. Um, so it does a lot of stuff automatically for you. Uh, now you want to be careful if you have some dynamic classes that are not loaded into the page uh, because UnCSS doesn't know how to detect those. But there is a solution for that, and I'll show you here in just a moment. So in case you want to use UnCSS, it's built into the stack, but it's not um, commented in. And the reason for that is because you need to kind of know what you're doing if you're going to use it. So you want to make sure that if any of those dynamic classes are being stripped out, that you'll um, use them. So there's a pipe right here uh, on line 88. So pipe, if production, on CSS, and it's calling this variable on CSS options. So if you comment this in by default, it's going to actually run in production. Um, so see how all these things say production here. Right now, when we run npm start, we're not in production. We're in development. If I was to stop this and then run npm run build, what this is going to do is run through the sculpt file and see everything that is calling a production flag, so these, and it's going to run these. So it's going to run CSS Nano, UnCSS. Um, it's going to write source maps, which is really awesome. Uh, and what that's going to do is uh, compile those into your disk folder. So uh, the npm run build is a production flag that you run when you're ready to upload your stuff to the server and deploy the site. Uh, you only do it uh, it just runs one time through and compiles everything into your static site, which is in dist. So it doesn't continuously run and it doesn't watch for changes. So you see how it stopped here because it completed all those tasks. So if you want something to continuously run and watch for changes, that's npm start. Cool. So that's where that is in the gulp file. Now, if you wanted to configure uh, on CSS because some of your classes are getting stripped out. You have this variable here on CSS options. We have this file called config.yaml. So if I open that up, you see I have a lot of configurations here. So we'll go find on CSS, which is right here. And we have uh, the source where it's looking for the files that will actually, it'll go through and um, take out unused CSS. So anything with a .html in, in this folder structure. And of course we got kicked over because I restarted the server and a new tab opened. So I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, now here in this ignore comment, this is where you can add um, any kind of ignores in there. So uh, we use a lot of is dash in the JavaScript, is dash open, is dash hidden, things like that. Um, as state classes. So if those are not in your main page by default, they're going to get stripped out. So um, you could put them into this ignore with a regular expression like this. Uh, JavaScript, uh, your JavaScript will be uh, concatenated and uglified. Um, so the uglify only happens in production, but uh, in general, it gets concatenated anyways. Um, so that means uh, put into one JavaScript folder. Again, this is one call to the server, so we're looking to optimize speed there. Also, there's image compression built into the Zurb stack. Uh, we're using uh, ImageMin for that, so any JPEG, PNG, GIF, SVG, uh, those are actually being minified, so you have um, smaller file sizes without losing any quality. And this is really cool. Uh, so a couple things in Foundation 5, um, when you created a SaaS project or just any SaaS project back um, without browser sync, 
you would need to find a way to actually run your local project, uh, things like Apache, Anvil, other tools like that, um, which are necessary to, to view your project and see your changes. Well, in, in the Zerp stack, we have Browser Sync installed, uh, which is really awesome. This not only gives you a um, server, like a local server that is running for you at localhost 8000 by default, um, but you can configure this port and it automatically refreshes your screen every time you make a change. So that's where the real power is. So that's why when we start the project, you see this new tab opens. And so it opens at localhost 8000. Now, if I create some pages, let's say I create a page called um, contact, you would just go to it like this. Uh, slash contact HTML, but localhost 8000 by itself, uh, that's their homepage. So if I was to jump over to the pages and let's say I just, I want to get rid of all this and save that. If I jump back over, uh, that section is gone. So it already refreshed before I was able to jump back over. Uh, so that's really cool. It automatically refreshes. Another cool thing is if you have multiple projects running at the same time with the same address, it will automatically open the second one and it'll append like a two to the address or something like that. So, so that way they can both be open at the same time. Um, you've probably seen this error called address in use before, and that's when you try to run two projects. Well, you don't have that problem here. Uh, so in the config.yaml, you can change that port to anything you want. We can make it 3,000 if we want. Cool. Oh, and if, to note, if you make changes in this file, uh, you do need to restart the server because this is not being watched for changes. So if you make changes, you don't see them right away, um, restart uh, npm start, and that will show your changes because not every file should be watched for changes because that would actually be really slow to load. So the build commands, um, now I already showed you uh, npm run build. Uh, basically that runs the production flag and that's used you know, one time when you're ready to upload to the server, it just optimizes all your files. It does all the, um, the compression of the CS, uh, your, your CSS gets compressed. So there's all the white spaces removed, JavaScript, same thing. Your images are minified. Uh, and unCSS can run as well. So uh, the the script naming that we chose here, npm start, is the most universal way to do it. Um, every uh, every npm command um, usually has an npm run and then something, uh, but in this case, we were able to use a shorthand like npm start instead of npm run start. So that's a little more technical. You, you just need to know that npm start and npm run build um, are the two main commands that you're gonna be using. 